welcome back. This video again is going to be covering the fallout of several more crypto exchange, centralized exchange collapses that are beginning to unfold off the back of the recent FTX bankruptcy filings. Taking a quick look at the cryptocurrency total market cap, unfortunately, we can see we're now at 845 a billion US dollars. So we're way away from that 1 trillion market cap we had previously. If we actually scroll back in time, we can see the last time we were actually at this kind of market cap was way back in January of 2021. So almost two years, um, if we forecast out a couple of months, it doesn't look like there'll be much movement. Previously, I made a video looking at potentially where the bottom could be for some of these equity and crypto markets. I urge you guys to check that video out. It's tied very significantly to the terminal interest rate that the Fed is setting over in the United States. Now, unfortunately, it does appear the correlation between the equities markets and the crypto markets at the moment is severely shaken slash broken. The majority of that is becoming from these sort of liquidity and bankruptcy issues that are plaguing the centralized exchange portion of cryptocurrency. And unfortunately, there have been some more announcements about pause withdrawals and further bankruptcy filings taking place. I'll be covering that in just a second. If I flick over though, I wanted to touch on something. Some of you guys that watch this channel may be aware of the guy in the middle of this thumbnail. That is Sasha Yanchin. I will link his video down in the description, but he does a fantastic job of calling out lots of the BS that is currently taking place within the system, particularly to do with sort of influencers within the crypto space. So over here on the right hand side, um, you've got uh, Graham Stephan, this guy's called Meet Kevin, I think, and you've got and Andre Jeek and of course Sam Bankman Fried over here. And it's talking about one of the channels that those guys had, one called Millennial Money. If I flick over here is a screenshot of the channel. It's been completely removed. They have removed all the necessary or all uh, relevant links, titles, videos, everything on this channel has been removed. The only giveaway being that they've got 170,000 subscribers still over on this channel. Now, every single video that was uploaded to this channel was effectively shilling the FTX platform. And of course, that would have been part of some deals in the background where most likely they've made an awful lot of money talking about FTX, shilling it and other types of platforms like this. The reason I wanted to bring this to any of your guys' attention, if you don't watch Sasha, he makes some very, very strong arguments about how sort of inf infected or infested um, the blight of shilling absolutely worthless stuff across the internet has become. And I actually do agree. Now, Sasha has some very strong views on cryptocurrency in general, um, which is fair enough. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. However, the things I do agree with is we need to begin to call out different areas of um, sort of, if you call them influencers, I'm, I'm not particularly fond of the word, but influencers throughout the crypto and sort of even the equity spaces about the BS effectively, they're shoving down people's throats. They are taking misinformed people and effectively pushing them onto these different platforms, telling you that things are risk-free, um, that you know you are going to make X amount of money if you set up these particular accounts. And it's because they're getting paid exorbitant sums of money to do so by either these centralized exchanges or pump and dump schemes. Many of you that have been in crypto for a while were probably aware of what happened on the Binance Smart Chain what was that, 12 to 18 months ago, there were so many different sort of scam tokens and pump and dump schemes that were taking place where large YouTubers were effectively receiving millions, if not billions of these tokens behind the scenes. The tokens would then skyrocket due to them shilling the token uh, into uh, you know, perpetuity. And then they would effectively exit that position using everyone that had sort of followed, trusted and watched their videos as their exit liquidity. Just wanted that to bring to your attention because it is still happening and you need to take everything you hear, including from me with a pinch of salt and make sure you do your own research. I stress that so much across different videos that I put out. Doing your own research is the only way that you guys are going to be sure of what you are doing and comfortable what you are doing with any of the capital that you decide to invest into these markets. I stress an awful lot that majority of these cryptocurrencies are of course very volatile and the risk is very high. But I try and give you guys as many of the facts as possible to make sure that you're informed in the decisions that you make. Do not do anything that I say without actually considering it first. Of course, I've been wrong in the past with some projects and I've openly spoken about me being personally wrong where I've actually lost portions of my capital as well. Anyway, just wanted to, to talk about that to begin with. 
what's actually happening with the majority of the crypto space at the moment is we are seeing more liquidations and more bankruptcies take place. So unfortunately, the crypto lender BlockFi is preparing for imminent bankruptcy, citing FTX collapse. So clearly there was stuff going on behind the scenes here where funds were being lent probably from BlockFi across to FTX or Alameda or any of its other subsidiaries or sister companies because of what has happened with FTX, it is now triggering, triggering a cascade effect across the crypto space. Now, I did push out some different tweets and I got some mixed responses, which I found rather amusing, saying, talking about crypto.com, for example, they were pausing withdrawals on certain different cryptocurrencies. There was an issue with Hedera withdrawals at the time, but I'd seen other positions from people across the space having their withdrawals paused. I will say the same again. If your cryptocurrency is on a non-custodial uh, sorry, a custodial exchange or centralized exchange where you do not have custody of your keys, move them to a non-custodial wallet, on-chain, hot wallet, whatever it may be, make sure you have your own seed phrases and private keys to whatever wallet that you move the cryptocurrency to, and that will stop you from being caught up in this mess that continues to expand and will probably continue to expand for several weeks to come as they sort of unravel what had been happening with FTX. We do not know how deeply FTX was involved with other centralized exchanges, and we are now beginning to see the fallout from them going bankrupt. Why on earth would you take the risk? I was basically getting called out on Twitter uh, for saying I was uh, sort of staring the pot or, or sort of you know being a bit fear but why on earth would you take the risk? of holding your crypto on a centralized exchange when we have seen several different liquidations take place over the last couple of weeks. I, for one, will not be a person that's going to get caught. I'm trying to inform you guys that the best course of action at the moment is to definitely move your crypto into self-custody wallets where applicable. That's all I can say. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. BlockFi is getting ready for potential bankruptcy, says these reports. The cryptocurrency neighborhood went through a string of unfortunate incidents throughout the week. The collapse of FTX's empire kept people in the cryptocurrency realm in disbelief. Several employees and outside investors reasoned to have lost their life savings while the user's money was still trapped on the platform. The fall of FTX has also affected the cryptocurrency lending platform BlockFi. Amidst all the chaos, BlockFi halted the withdrawals on their platform. The New Jersey-based exchange informed the users on November 11th that it will be limiting platform activity. BlockFi recently stated in a letter shared on Twitter that it was shocked and dismayed by the failure of FTX and Alameda. In one of the most recent reports by the Wall Street Journal, BlockFi is also preparing for potential bankruptcy after the collapse of FTX. As per the details from familiar or people familiar with the matter, the cryptocurrency lender is preparing for bankruptcy. Details reveal they had significant exposure to Bankman Freed's FTX. And like I said, we don't know how many other FT, uh, how many other centralized exchanges did also have exposure to FTX. At the moment, there aren't many reports of Coinbase or Binance having exposure because, of course, they were looking to potentially take over the firm in order to solve the liquidity crisis. But as soon as they saw the balance sheets of FTX, they turned for the hills and ran. However, unfortunately, BlockFi is not the only centralized exchange or lending platform that is experiencing fallout from the FTX collapse. The next one is actually Genesis, $2.8 $2 billion crypto lending unit, which is affiliated with Gemini, is also halting withdrawals, citing FTX collapses. If I move across to uh, this interesting thread, if this is really the end for Genesis, this could be more impactful than FTX. FTX hurt li liquid funds and consumers. Genesis impacts nearly every single company in crypto. Let's dig in. For those who aren't familiar, Genesis started as the first over-the-counter Bitcoin desk in 2013. They're now crypto's largest lending desks, so not the largest exchange, the largest lending desk. Genesis is part of DCG or Barry Silbert's holding company that owns Coindesk, Foundry, Genesis, Grayscale and Luno. DCG also runs a huge venture capital firm. At the height of the market, Genesis was moving size. Check out the Q4 2021 numbers. You had $50 billion in loan originations, $12.5 billion in active loans, $31 billion in spot volume being traded and $21 billion of derivatives. Then, of course, we had Three Arrows Capital saga, where Genesis was the biggest creditor to Three Arrows Capital, having lent them a whopping $2.4 billion. Genesis then filed a $1.2 billion claim against Three Arrows Capital, 
um, with DCG stepping in and assumed the 1.2 billion claim, leaving Genesis with no outstanding liabilities tied to Three Arrows Capital. Things then, of course, have continued to unravel. Genesis also had large exposure to Babel Finance, the centralized finance platform that got hit hard in the June unwind. And then in August, longtime CEO Michael Morrow resigned with nearly everyone known at Genesis is no longer there. By Q3 of 2022, their numbers, of course, had fallen drastically. So we can see there, loan originations, 8.4 billion. So spot volume traded 9.6 dramatic fall from what we'd seen previously. So why is the downfall of Genesis so bad? Dozens of companies like Gemini use Genesis to help their consumers earn yield. If you're a CeFi platform that offers yield, you probably use Genesis. Using some rough numbers and simplifying the process a bit, here's how it works. You give your crypto to Gemini, Gemini then gives your crypto to Genesis. Genesis lends out your crypto to some kind of fund. The fund borrows Genesis X plus 2%. Genesis gives Gemini X plus 1%. Gemini gives you X percent. So then this is, you know, how you're effectively earning yield across these platforms. And it's not just limited to the likes of Gemini, but also don't forget there are lending or yield options on Coinbase and also Binance. This only works though if the counterparties that Genesis lent to can actually repay their borrowed debt. If Genesis can't get their crypto back, you can't give them the crypto back to Gemini or insert any other centralized finance platform, which means Gemini effectively can't give you your crypto because Genesis, the firm they lent the crypto to, can't actually retrieve it. Beyond that, nearly every whale I know that plays in crypto gives money to Genesis. Instead of earning yield on the BlockFi's and Gemini's of the world, they give directly to Genesis to earn that yield. So they are higher in that earning chain that we just saw up here. These institutions, family offices and whales can't get their crypto back. And this is why Genesis halting withdrawals is so bad. They sit at the top, the direct center of the crypto market, uh, capital markets. They custody those funds. They help institutions earn yield and they are the yield product for C5 platforms. It's a bad situation. Where do we go from here? Hopefully DCG has the funds to backstop this in the short term. And they we're assuming that they don't have or they aren't raising to raise money right now. They raised 10 billion in November 2021. I guess they'd raise at a valuation roughly 10 to 20% of that. Stay safe out there. If you have funds on a CeFi platform, think about going to cold storage using a ledger, or of course, even hot wallets are better than a centralized exchange. If you don't want to go to cold storage, use Coinbase. Long live decentralized finance. Now, interestingly enough, there have been some other comments about decentralized finance, which I'll show up on screen now. Here we can see some tweets come out from Watchaguru, but they are from JP Morgan. So JP Morgan even said all the recent collapses in the crypto ecosystem have actually been from centralized players and not from decentralized protocols. We can see here JP Morgan has identified centralized players as the root cause of recent cryptocurrency crashes and nothing to do with decentralized finance in itself. Now, of course, decentralized finance does have inherent risks. You are relying on smart contracts and the security of the platform as with any other platform. However, because it is being or being relied on by smart contracts, which majority of the time are completely transparent via white papers and in the operation take source swap for a, uh, for an example, over on Hedera, You've even got Pancake Swap on the Binance Smart Chain, Uniswap on Ethereum. People know what is actually happening behind the scenes. They can track the different transactions that are taking place on the exchanges and they can signal these alarm bells ahead of time. Now, of course, there have been some other issues. Don't forget, we've had the Solana chain hacks and things of that nature. However, they are not sort of egregiously involving themselves in almost Ponzi-like schemes behind the scenes. It is in fact real capital that is actually happening. So again, make sure you understand the risks of what you're doing. At the moment, I think avoiding centralized exchanges is a very good stance to take. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that are going to be hit incredibly hard by this, particularly I know a lot of people across the crypto space that have been heavily involved with BlockFi. Um, again, don't particularly believe in it. Of course, that yield has to come from somewhere, particularly when you see the financial markets, bond yields, current account interest rates, flexible accounts, having yields much lower than cryptocurrency. Where on earth are they getting it from? There's an old adage or an old saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. It most definitely is in terms of where these yields are coming from. You need to understand the full tree of 
what is actually happening in order to make an informed decision as to whether you should take that risk or not. I'll begin wrapping up this video then just by looking at some other headlines. El Salvador's president is saying they're buying one Bitcoin every day starting tomorrow. So next, uh, starting from Friday, they'll be buying a Bitcoin every day. Speculators of Bitcoin being dead begin surfacing. A major Bitcoin bull has not lost hope in the El Salvadorian president. Not only that as well, Binance has just gained a regulatory approval to offer crypto custody services in Abu Dhabi. Of course, there's an awful lot of money flowing around in Abu Dhabi. Again, this could see some nice cash injections to the overall market cap and potentially regain some stability. Rounding up then with some different Hedera news, there has been a great teaser video being released by Earthlings.land. Of course, they are a metaverse based game being built directly or solely on Hedera. I do believe these are in-game images um, of what they are currently producing. This looks like the open world. I believe they spoke in the, uh, the headlining tweet. This is Paris in their new open world, uh, of course, which they are building. This looks absolutely incredible. We see some livery there on that tram for Hashpack. And flowing around, this does look very good and I'm very excited to see this take place. Of course, don't forget there are different NFT mints that are happening for earthlings.land. Each of those NFTs have in-game utility. And of course, there's a lot of speculation at the moment as to how well those will do once this game does actually release. That being said, it does look like a good experience for anyone involved in crypto when this does go live. And of course, I'll have more videos on this when that time arises. Final thing I wanted to quickly look at and touch upon, Timeless, which is of course a Hedera based use case, is excited to announce a collaboration with the Aerospace Malaysia Innovation Center to focus on the guarantee of origin of sustainable aviation fuels. Now, of course, there's no mention at the moment as to whether they'll be utilizing Hedera. We can only hope, but AMIC is an industrial industry-led research and technology development center for Malaysia's aerospace industry with lead industrial partners, including Airbus, Rolls-Royce and Composite Technology Research Malaysia. AMIC brings together the world's leading solutions providers to deliver new and innovative solutions to the aviation industry. All of our solutions, oh, there you go. So actually Coinman, the H Barbarian, even asked the question before me, just for clarification, does your carbon reporting and guarantee of origin solution utilize the Hedera Hashgraph ledger? Yep, all of our solutions utilize the Hedera network. So there we go, we can see it from the horse's mouth directly. Timeless is of course still utilizing Hedera Hashgraph and other solutions like this they're continuing to build out will become fully fledged use cases on the Hedera mainnet, of course, driving growth and transactions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit ranty and a bit over the place in different segments. I appreciate that. However, it's important for me to get my point across as to what the hell is going on with crypto and to also take a majority of things you hear online with a pinch of salt. There is an awful lot of misinformation and um, sort of self indoctrination from many different spaces uh, from around the cryptocurrency world. I just don't want you guys to get caught up in that and hopefully you appreciate it. Anyway, guys, until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.